Hello, welcome to the Elevate Your Wellbeing podcast with your host Rachel Wagstaff and welcome to episode 17. I'm excited to dive into this week's topic. I'm just going to dive in with a little bit of info for what's going on. So it's nearly the end of the month this is going live on the 24th of march so a couple of days ago we had the new moon in aries the day before that was the astrological new year aka spring started here in the northern hemisphere so it's all new beginnings and then in five days we have the first quarter moon so i'm going to focus on what's been happening this week because around that new moon, that new year energy can still feel quite slow so don't feel that as you're listening to this that you're missing out you're not uh, this, the energy is building anyway between that new moon and as we move towards the first quarter in full moon. So I'm not going to talk about the new year, the astrological new year or spring. Uh, but what I will do is I really want to highlight new beginnings and how hiring a coach can really help you accelerate and focus on that new beginning. So as always, before we get started, I always like to start off these podcast episodes the same way I start a practice in my Rise and Shine Wellbeing community. So make sure you have some natural light on you, open up the curtains, maybe you're listening to this podcast episode as you're going for a walk or a run, fantastic. Make sure you have some water, you're staying hydrated and grab your journal as well. It's really good to take some notes note down how you're feeling as we go through this topic, especially with the topic of coaching, because a coach is all about helping you really understand where you are blocked and helping you to move through that. And then there will be a journal prompt at the end of this episode as well. So I thought this was really apt to go into, uh, especially with the topic I do have in mind for us next week. And if you have been listening since this podcast began, or if you've just found this podcast and you've gone through the other episodes, you know that I don't really plan the topic. I like to feel into what I'm sharing. It's always fun looking at some of the astrological happenings to see how on point they really are. But I ne- know next week that I, wa- I have something very specific that I want to share with you that I share with all my well-being clients, whether that's in my community or as a coach. And I really want to set you up so you're ready for that for next week's episode by going into the topic for this week, which is coaches help you collapse time. A coach will help you to collapse time. So what does that mean? You might be listening to that going, I don't know what you mean. Uh, So investing in a coach really helps you to reach your goals because they're collapsing time. So what do I mean by that? I've said that a few times now. A coach will collapse time. They help you get where you're wanting to go quicker. Now, if you're hiring a coach strategically, you will find someone who has either had experience themselves with what you're going through and the goals you're wanting to reach, or they've worked with people in that similar area. So they have have that experience of either going through it themselves or they've experienced coaching people through that. And that's also really important. I will really highlight just a little backstory for me. And even to this day, it really sits with me because When I first started teaching yoga, I had so many people inquire about, do you teach prenatal yoga? I'd love to do yoga whilst I'm pregnant. Do you teach pregnancy yoga? And I'd only been teaching for less than a year. And I was like, there's so many people in my local area, because obviously everything was in person. I was hiring community centers. And I was like, there are obviously so many people really interested in doing this. So it's worth my while going out and training further, so extending my training into prenatal yoga, not just general yoga classes, as it were. So I wanted to make sure that people coming to my classes, and I did have people that would come to a a general yoga class. They either had experience in their yoga practice and they were happy just to listen to their body. But some people never did yoga before they were pregnant. Some people never did yoga after they were pregnant. They were just like, I want to do something that's very gentle, and they help me feel calm uh, if I'm feeling stressed or I'm anxious about going through my pregnancy or giving birth or just having baby how life will change 
And it was really beautiful and quite an honor to guide women through that. But I can remember a friend's husband saying to me one day, well, you've never been pregnant. You've not had children. You don't have children. You don't even plan to have children. Why would you be teaching prenatal yoga? And kind of said the same sort of story. You know, it's had people inquiring. And then he was like, no, but you've never experienced that. It's something you don't want to experience. And my first response, still true to this day, is, well, how many doctors, how many nurses, how many midwives have never had children, have never experienced that? And just because it's something you've never physically experienced, if you have the training, if you're around it that's so much that you absorb all this knowledge that you can help people through it, that's all that matters as well. So it's making sure that the coach you pick is right for you. And this is why it's so important to do a little mini call with a coach or really, you know, don't just pick someone out of of thin air, out of complete randomness. Uh, because you want to make sure that they really resonate. And I want to do the same for you. I don't want to just take you on as a client because you're someone that needs help and you're going to pay me for it. No, I want to make sure that I'm going to get you results. And that's why, as a coach, I feel very strong that I can help you collapse time as well because it's getting you closer to your goal. And by collapsing time, it's like if you did something on your own, maybe it would take a year to get there. But with a coach, with someone guiding you and highlighting, where you need some help, how they can motivate you, all these different systems that you can put in place, learning different tools and techniques that they've used themselves that have worked or they've taught other people and they've seen how it works. They can get you there quicker. So maybe instead of it taking a year, it takes three months or six months. So that's collapsing time. It's taking less time for you to achieve your goals. And it even helps you to make the goals attainable. Because they can quite literally see where you need that extra motivation. And I think this is really, really, really powerful. So even seeing this myself when I taught prenatal yoga, and I really do see and feel and honor everything that I've gone through as a yoga teacher has really highlighted the power of what being a coach is, because I can see it as people experience what I'm teaching them and even with the feedback that's come through from years of teaching women who go through their pregnancy and feel so relaxed that when it comes to birthing their baby they've even surprised people in the hospital with how quickly they went through their pre- their birth as in they would rock up at the hospital and they're like no you're too calm you can't be dilated and they're like no I think you need to check me because I'm pretty sure I'm crowning and a lot of them were and they would comment of just how calm they were with going through it. So there's all these tools and techniques that were really beautiful to share. And it's honoring that wisdom in my well-being experience of 15 plus years of what I then bring to you as a coach. And it's highlighting how we can hold ourselves back and really investing in a coach, in a mentor has been a huge game changer for me because especially in I have found as a yoga teacher in the yoga field it can be very addicting in a good way to learning more you're like I want to know more about this so when I first started teaching yoga doing my training as a prenatal yoga teacher wasn't the 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 first and the last time I went on for additional training after I did my basic yoga teacher training but I wanted to learn more. I was like, oh, I really love this technique or I really love this teacher and I love their their particular practice and I go off and would work with them. Essentially, that was working with a coach or working with a mentor. But it was very, very specific in this means I can then teach people in this particular way. But it's very rare to be taught anything to do with business. So I can remember my very first business coach back in 2018 and it was very specifically business to the fact that the uh, coaching program that she runs is called business school and it was amazing just to be able to learn how to run my business better and I first started teaching yoga in 2012 and I've been running a business 
previously before that as a holistic therapist, but it wasn't until 2018 that I finally invested in my very first business coach. 2018, I took so long. And honestly, looking back, I don't know whether it was a case of, I didn't know that you could invest in a coach to learn about business or what. It just came along beautifully in how a lot of things can happen that the right person showed up at the right time and really helped me through what I needed at the time. And again, like my prenatal training, that extension of my yoga teacher training, that wasn't my last extension of additional training. And from 2018, that person that I invested in was not my first and last mentor that I it, uh, that I went to to expand my knowledge. So there's always different people that you can learn and grow from. So don't expect that investing in a coach will be the be all and end all. We do we do outgrow some of our coaches the same way that we outgrow some of our yoga teachers. So you might be listening to this and you might be a student of mine that's come to classes with me you might still do you might previously have done and then you're intrigued on what I'm offering now but if you're someone that has previously attended classes and you stopped inevitably you've outgrown how I teach and that's perfectly fine and this is what we do you know we we learn something from someone and then we're like oh I want to learn a little bit more about this it can take us off in a slightly different direction and that's perfectly fine. It's actually a really beautiful way of growing and expanding our mindset. So investing in a coach. And this can feel really challenging if you really struggle with the mindset of it's just better if I do it myself. It'll be better if I do it myself. I can do this on myself on my own. I don't need help to do it. But Investing in a coach, they will see what's holding you back. They will see your strengths and see where you're dimming your light and help you to find the motivation to come out of your shell, to really ignite those flames in you for what you're here to do, whether that's as a business owner or whether you're building a better habit or routine for your health, your well-being, so that you can perform better at work or you're more fun and happy to be around when you're with your family. So looking at that overall well-being is super important. So seeing how we can bring that out in you, that's exactly what I love doing. And it's allowing yourself to be challenged as well. So it can feel like, well, why would I, why would I invest in someone to just tell me to do this? But a big part of coaching is the accountability. So have you ever done something, say joining a gym, and they then say, hi, welcome to the gym. And as they're walking around the gym and they're showing you all the equipment and going through your induction. And if you ever heard them suggest, why don't you refer a friend, bring a friend along for free. They can try us out for free and then they could get a discount and then you can earn some commission or something. You know, there's always a little bit of benefits if you can then sign up a friend. But they do this because you need accountability. You're more likely to stay a member of the gym and stay consistent because you have that accountability. And you'll keep each other accountable because nine times out of 10, you'll feel like going, but your friend won't. You're like, come on, let's go. And then you'll feel better for moving. And then when you don't feel like going to the gym, they will. So they encourage you to go. And that helps you with that consistency. So you will become more consistent by having that accountability, by having someone there that can check in on you, that you can ask those questions. And this is really important when you're wanting to succeed in whatever way you're wanting to succeed. So like I said, you could be looking at a business coach. You could be looking at a mindset coach. You could be looking at a health and well-being coach. There's so many ways that you can be supported in what you're wanting to do and help you to succeed and get there quicker. And that's really what it's about, isn't it? Because it can be really easy to give up when you're like, oh, this is taking ages. 
but by having that expertise from someone else who's been through it, whether that's personally or they've helped guide so many other clients through something similar, they can see exactly what tools you need, what steps you need to take to help you succeed in whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve. And I really, truly, honestly believe that that is so important, so powerful. And then to bring that background to what I've highlighted at the beginning of this week, we started the new astrological year and we also then had the new moon in Aries. So to have the new moon the day after the astrological new year really, really highlights a beautiful time for new beginnings. And realistically, this is like the proper like new year sort of thing you know if you're used to like January 1st being the new year it doesn't really feel inspiring to do uh, or get started on new habits or routines at the beginning of the year when it's dark and gray and rainy and you're probably hung over if you've been enjoying and partying out for New Year's Eve whereas now yes okay brings here and ironically on the first day of spring here in the UK at least where I was uh, and it was chucking it down with rain so it didn't really feel like spring had sprung but it's lighter we're already getting 12 hours uh you know 12 hours in a day of light and it feels so much more attainable to do certain things with regards to our well-being it's light when we wake up and we're going out it's still light when we're coming home from school or college or work so it can feel a lot easier to achieve and get on and get started and get going with starting something new so this time of year is a really really empowering time to start those new habits to really honor that stage of a new beginning and if you're going to get started why not invest in a coach why not get the help from someone who can really see your skills and really bring them out in you to help you achieve your goals quicker and even more effectively. And, you know, noticing when you have those moments of limiting belief and self-doubt, self-sabotage, or believing you're not worthy, whatever it is, and you can talk through this with your coach. And they can say, you know, this is exactly, you know, this happens, this is normal. But it's someone there for you that can really understand why you're doing what you're doing. And as much as friends, family and colleagues around you can understand it, they will also be the first ones to support you if you want to stop, quit, let go, drop back into the bad behaviours. Whereas the coach will come back to the reasons why you wanted to do this, which would most likely be the reasons why you hired them as a coach, because you're wanting to achieve whatever it is, say, with regards to succeeding in your business or creating a new business or creating a morning routine or getting into a healthy habit, changing your mindset. A lot of things that I go into as a coach who are my clients. And it's amazing when you can... Be there for those dark moments, those dark nights of the souls, and really help bring people through it and see just the, the penny drop when they realize, oh, wow, I can do this. I am worthy. And then they keep on going. And that is exactly what I would love for you. And if you are at that point where you're like, I want to start this, whether it's starting a business or whether you're wanting to really work on your mindset, if you find you have those limiting beliefs, those self-doubts about what you can do and what you are able to do, then I can help you with that. Or if you're wanting to start feeling better in yourself, working on your well-being, then I can help you do that. And I've slightly tweaked my clarity calls now. So they're 15 minutes. And we can just hop on a really quick call, go through what you're wanting to achieve, work out whether I'm the best coach for you right now. And then you can really gauge if I'm, you know, if you particularly want to work with me. So it's always good to try on for size and get to know someone. And then you, we would have a one-on-one 90-minute -on -one coaching call 
to dive in and for some people that's enough and then you some people come back a few months later to go in and expand even more but once you've had that one 90 minute coach that one-on-one 90 minute coaching call then you get access to my private diary so there are more dates and times in that diary for three month or six month coaching and the three month coaching the six month coaching means you get a one-on-one call with me every single week for three months or six months for an hour and we can really do a lot of work over the next three or six months so I would love to help support you in whatever that is that you're wanting to create and if something comes to mind awesome click the link in the show notes and book in that 15 minute call so we can have a chat and check that I am the right person for you moving forward but before we go I do want you to ponder on this journaling prompt which is do I easily ask for help do I easily ask for help Do I easily ask for help? And this is a huge one for a lot of us, me included, because I was super, super stubborn as a kid, as a young adult. Probably not super, super stubborn now. There's still an essence of stubbornness, but it's honoring that your time is valuable. And there's a lot of things I bet you do that could be done by someone else. And it may not be up to your standards, but it's done. Ask for help. Or there may be something that you're wanting to do and you feel like you should know how to do this. But asking for help again would collapse that time because you could get something done quicker. And it's the ego that gets in the way. So as someone who has gone through this a lot, who can still go through this, but this is where hiring coaches have really has really, really helped me. And they, I've I've done this in multiple ways, like as a group coaching and then as one-on-one. And it's really empowering when you get to ask someone for help and go, look, this is what I'm going through. Yeah, I know you've been stuck through something similar. What would be your advice having gone through that for where I am at now? And it's so amazing to get that clarification. So do you easily ask for help? And if you don't, let's get on that 15 minute call and have a chat and see what is holding you back and how you could start asking for help with certain things that would then create more room for you to be able to achieve your goals, create more time, help you to feel less stressed. So thank you very much for joining me this week. If you have got any questions, do let me know. All my details are in the show notes. If you're having a listen and you are on Instagram, take a little screenshot either of yourself listening to the podcast or just take a screenshot of the podcast episode you're listening to. Share it on your stories and tag me at I am Rachel underscore UK. I love to see who is listening and connect that way if there are any topics you would like to listen to in the future if you have any topics in mind that you'd like me to go into please let me know send me an email all the details are in the show notes and I'm already really excited to go into what we're diving into for next week's episode so this again will really help you with those new beginnings and new goals so I shall see you next week Bye.